So in this video, we're going to be looking at the next molecule of carbohydrates, which will be lipids. Now, when we talk about lipids, it actually covers quite a lot of molecules. We're going to be concentrating on what we call triglycerides and then on phospholipids. Now, triglycerides are the a form of energy storage. They're an excellent form of energy storage because um, triglycerides can be taken into respiration and actually release more energy per mole than glucose. However, they're also used as electrical insulation, for example, the myelin sheath around the nerves. They're used for thermal insulation, so under the skin, the subcutaneous fat, for thermal insulation. They can be used for protection around organs. They're used to aid buoyancy in aquatic animals. And they can also be the basis of steroid-based hormones. Although steroid-based hormones are not purely triglycerides. So for example, things like testosterone. Now, let's have a look at the structure of a triglyceride. So a triglyceride is made up of glycerol and three fatty acids. Now, crucially, it is not a polymer because it's not made up of many repeating units. It's just made up of glycerol and three fatty acids. So if we have a look at glycerol itself. Glycerol is a fairly easy molecule to draw. Three carbons, hydrogen, and then hydroxyl groups along the side. Fatty acids are a little bit more complicated because there are different types, but the basic idea with a fatty acid is you got at one end, you've got a carboxylic acid group, hence the acid, and then you have repeating units of carbon and hydrogen. Now those repeating units can be as long as necessary, so I could sort of put an N in there, and then we'll end up with a CH3. So you could have 100, you could have 500, you could have 20, etc. But there are two types of fatty acids, and that's really important. So one type of fatty acid is a type of fatty acid that only has single carbon carbon bonds. Those are called saturated fatty acids and they are the ones found predominantly in animal fats. They are less healthy for us because we cannot react them with anything. They get deposited within um, the endothelial lining of the arteries, specifically the coronary arteries, but other arteries as well. Unsaturated, they still have the carboxylic acid group, but they will have a double carbon bond somewhere. So they could have one double carbon bond like this, which would just be simply unsaturated. Or if we stuck another double carbon bond here, so for example, there we'll put it here and remove one of the hydrogens, and that one, and that one, that would now be a polyunsaturated fatty acid. Crucial thing being with the fatty acids, unsaturated or polyunsaturated, they are more healthy for us. They come from fish oils and plant oils and they don't get deposited in the coronary arteries. So how do you make a triglyceride? Well, remember we said in the carbohydrates video that when you join things together, it's a condensation reaction because you will produce water. So if we take our glycerol and I'll show you with one fatty acid initially and to make life easy we're going to draw the COOH group but the rest of it we're just going to do sort of as a zigzag 
it allows us to say we don't know exactly what's coming after that it's a chain of carbons and hydrogens because obviously triglycerides are only made of carbon hydrogen and oxygen so what's going to happen is we're going to do like we did with the carbohydrates we're going to remove water so there's an oh and there's an h and we're going to take that water away and we're going to do that three times so we are going to be removing three molecules of water in total so what you will end up with is your glycerol and it has now lost one of its hydrogens and then you have your fatty acid which has lost its OH group and so these get joined together like so and you have this bond here carbon oxygen with a carbon double bond oxygen there and that is called an ester bond and obviously you've got three of them one two three ester bonds so again how do we summarize it so triglyceride is going to be three fatty acids plus one glycerol joined by three ester bonds formed in condensation reactions. And obviously triglycerides, they're insoluble. We know that. Um, and that's what makes them a good energy storage. Now, the other thing to know about triglycerides is that they are hydrophobic which means water repelling. Now we know from doing washing up that when you add oil and water, they don't mix. And that's because triglycerides are water repelling molecules. They cannot mix with water. That's gonna become important when we look at the next molecule. So triglycerides, very simple molecule, not a polymer, three fatty acids, which may be the same or different to each other, joined with three ester bonds with the production of three molecules of water. So what other molecule is important is phospholipids. Why are they important? Because they are related to triglycerides. So with a triglyceride, and I'm going to draw the sort of simpler form, we had glycerol with three fatty acids and three ester bonds. Yeah, so there was one ester bond, there was the second, and there was the third. These were your fatty acids, and this was your glycerol. Now, in the case of phospholipids, what happens is that one fatty acid is removed and is replaced instead with a phosphate group, a PRO4. So you can see straight away that unlike the triglycerides, there are only two fatty acids, there are only two ester bonds, there's still a glycerol, but we've replaced the third fatty acid with a phosphate. Occasionally they will ask you to compare them, so just sort of draw them out. Think logically, if I've got a uh, phospholipid here, if I draw out my triglyceride next to it, it's very easy to see the difference between them. Two ester bonds, three ester bonds. Two fatty acids, three fatty acids. Phosphate group, no phosphate group. Both have glycerol. 
both have ester bonds, just different numbers. So we often draw phospholipids, instead of like that, we draw them like this. So it looks a little bit like a rosette. You have the two fatty acids over here, and you have the glycerol plus the phosphate group over here. We call this the head. We call these the tails. And what's important is that the tails are hydrophobic, like my triglycerides were, but the head, because it has the phosphate group which is charged, is hydrophilic. And that will become really important when we look at the structure of cell membranes because phospholipids are used in cell membranes. And that is their function. Now, just before we finish, we should look at the test for lipids. The test for lipids is the emulsion test. It's called the emulsion test because you're going to produce. So for the emulsion test, the first thing you do is you add your sample to ethanol, or the other way around. And mix or shake. You then pour this into water and mix. And again, you will get, as we said before, you'll get a white emulsion. That is the positive test for a lipid. A very simple test, um, very easy to do, and a very simple response.